Welcome back to the Outer Planets for fifth grade lesson two. So last class, we focused on learning the names of the planets in order. We started closest to the sun and moved out away from the sun. We learned a mnemonic device to help us remember them. Do you remember it? My very educated mother just served us nachos. So we know there's eight planets, right? Last week we practiced. Um, if I were to ask you, what is the third planet from the sun? You should, at this point, be able to write down or say, my very educated. Hmm. Educated starts with an E. What planet starts with an E? Our very own planet, right? Earth. <laughs> very good. So again, today we're going to move on. We're going to, we're going to cut these planets in half. We're going to take half the planets and look at it as a group. Today we're going to look at the outer planets. We have two sets. The first four planets are known as terrestrial planets. We're going to look at those in the next class. And the last four planets are known as the outer planets. And we're going to take a deeper dive on those planets. So let's take a look. Those last four planets, again, they're called the outer planets. They include Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. They are also called the Jovian planets. And that's just a nice name for you to know because a lot of materials written about these planets will use that scientific name. However, on our test, we are going to refer to them as the outer planets, which should be easy to remember because they're the outer planets, right? They're furthest away from the sun. They're way out there outside the asteroid belt. These planets are made up mostly of gases. They have no solid surfaces and they have low density. You can't walk on these planets because they don't have that solid, solid surface. All those gases make up the surface of these planets. When I say low density, I'd like you to think back to your lessons on density and mass, right? Mass is the amount of space that an object takes up. When we refer to density, we refer to how tightly the molecules are packed inside an object. For example, if I have a foam ball, like a styrofoam ball in one hand, and I have a rock in the other hand, both of these objects are the same exact size, but there's very big differences between them, right? The rock is going to feel heavier, it's taking up the same amount of space as that foam ball, but it's much, much heavier. And that's because the particles are packed in there very tightly, meaning that it has high density. Our styrofoam ball, on the other hand, the particles inside the styrofoam ball are not packed tightly. They're very, very far apart. So there's lots of air inside of there, making it feel lighter. So even though two objects can take up the same amount of space, it, it doesn't mean that they're going to weigh the same. Right? So our outer planets are much the same as that foam ball. There's lots of gas, lots of air in there, and they are lighter or lower in density. The particles are not packed closely in there. Some of them have a solid core inside of them of densely packed rock, but the outer surfaces are very, very thick, soupy, gaseous. Um, surfaces that make up most of these planets. So again, they're larger in size. They're a lot bigger than the first four planets. Our inner planets or our terrestrial planets are much smaller. They all have rings and many, many moons, right? Our first four planets in the solar system don't have any rings and very few moons. But the outer planets, they all have rings and they all have moons. Sometimes you can't see the rings, but they're there. They're also the furthest planets from the sun, right? That's why we call them the outer planets. And when we think in terms of temperature, you can think of this in terms of the relationship 
of where the planet is in relation to the sun. The further away from the sun we get, the colder those temperatures are going to be. So now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper. Let's take a look at Jupiter. Jupiter is a beautiful planet. It has all those rings. You can see all the stripes on the planet. So it's a very visible planet and you can always recognize it very, very easily. Let's take a, a closer look at the characteristics of Jupiter. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system, right? It's the fifth planet from the sun. It's a gas giant, and we've used that word before, meaning that it's made up mostly of gases, in this case, hydrogen and helium. It does have rings, but they're hard to see. You may have noticed a big red dot in a lot of the photos of, of Jupiter. That dot is a storm that has lasted hundreds of years. The entire surface of Jupiter is very stormy. One day on Jupiter is only 10 hours, where one day on Earth, right, is 12 hours. And one year on Jupiter, that's one trip around the sun, takes the same amount of time as Earth does to go around the sun 11.8 times. Right? So one trip around the sun is one year. So one year, on Jupiter takes 11.8 years on Earth. So NASA and other space exploration has found 79 confirmed moons on Jupiter. Ancient populations could see it without a telescope. So it has lots of names in different mythologies. Jupiter in Rome was um, Zeus in Greek times. So the Greek names were switched over to um, apply to the planets. NASA has visited and orbited this planet a lot, right? It's the closest of the gas giant to the sun. So we've been able to send probes in orbits, Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Cassini, New Horizons, and Juno have all visited and taken lots of photos. And if you go to the NASA website, you can find lots and lots of different photos and you can see some close-up photos of that big red dot where that storm continues to rage. And there it is, Jupiter. All right. So let's carry on and see what the next planet, right? We said Jupiter was the fifth planet in our solar system, we're gonna move on to the sixth planet in our solar system, which is going to be my very educated mother just served, hmm, served, oh, Saturn, there it is, right there, Saturn, let's check it out. So Saturn is also a gas giant made up mostly of hydrogen and helium. It's got that thick, soupy atmosphere. Again, we can't land on these planets. There's no solid surface for us to land a probe on or walk on. It is the sixth planet from the sun. It has beautiful rings. These seven main rings that have spaces between them that really make them pop and they're just absolutely beautiful. The rings are made up of chunks of rock and ice, one day is equal to 10 hours, well, more than 10 hours. And one year, one trip around the sun is 29 Earth years. So in the time that it takes Saturn to go around the, the sun one time, Earth goes around 29 times. We've already found 53 moons. There's 29 more that are still being investigated and learned about. Ancient peoples could also see this planet without a telescope. Galileo was kind of interesting. He was the first to, to look at Saturn through a telescope. It was the 1600s. And when he looked through the telescope at Saturn, he was a little 
momentarily confused about what he was looking at because he could see the rings that go around, but to him, they looked like they could possibly be two more planets. So he thought maybe there was three planets instead of just Saturn, or perhaps those rings were handles. Maybe he thought the planet had handles on the side of it. Later on, he realized, along with others, that it was the, those beautiful, really outstanding uh, rings that we can see even sometimes without a telescope, we can see them a little bit. So NASA has sent lots of probes in orbits to Saturn. Pioneer 11, Cassini, Voyager 1, and Voyager 2 have all gone and orbited and taken pictures. Let's see if we can get a good look. Here's Saturn. And as I mentioned, those rings just really stand out incredibly. And again, if you want to go to the NASA site that I've listed on our page, you can see lots more photos of Saturn and learn more about the, the visits that we have sent to Saturn. All right. Let's see what's next, shall we? We visited Jupiter, Saturn. And next is Uranus. Now, Uranus is another one that's just, I think, just beautiful. Look at that bright blue. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, hopefully I can edit that out. So next we're going to visit, so here's Uranus. It is our seventh planet. You can see how beautiful it is, that bright, gorgeous blue. Let's drill down and take a look at, I keep messing that up. Let's drill down and take a look at the facts about Uranus. Uranus is an ice giant. You noticed for the first two of the outer planets, I used the term gas giant. So you can always remember that all of these are giants. It's going to help you remember they are the biggest planets in our solar system. An ice giant is only slightly different from the gas giant in that it has more ice flowing around the solid core. It has a solid core inside of it. That flowing icy material is made up of methane, hydrogen, and helium. We mentioned it's the seventh planet from our sun. It has 13 rings, again, a little harder to see. The only planet that spins on its side so that's Uranus. That's the thing that makes Uranus very different is it's kind of tilted on its side and it spins on its side. It has 27 known moons, but there's probably more and we're probably going to continue to find more as we're able to send more probes. It also spins in the opposite direction of Earth. Not too many planets do that. Most planets spin the same direction as Earth, but not Uranus. It's got to be on its side. It's got to spin the other direction. <laughs> so one day on Uranus is 17 hours and 14 minutes. One trip around the sun, one year, is 84 years on Earth. So Uranus was discovered in Great Britain. Great Britain using a telescope in 1781. The only probe to visit Uranus is Voyager 2. So Voyager 2 is the, the furthest reaching probe that we've been able to send out so far. And again, there's more uh, video, you can find video and photos on um, the NASA site if you wanna learn more about what that probe discovered. Let's take a close up look here. There it is, beautiful blue planet. <laughs> All right, we have one more planet to discover. Our very last, Neptune. My very educated mother just served us nachos or noodles, whatever you like. And for Neptune, let's take a deeper look. 
Facts about Neptune. Neptune is 30 times as far from the sun as the Earth. It has six rings. It is another ice giant, similar to those gas giants, but it's made mostly of water, ammonia, and methane over a solid core that's about the same size as Earth. It has that thick, windy atmosphere. One day on Neptune, is about 16 hours compared to Earth's 12 hours. And one trip around the sun is 165 Earth years. And I have a link below, don't forget to click on it. And it shows you um, how very far this planet is from our sun. It has 13 moons that have already been discovered, but they're discovering more as we go on. Now the only probe to orbit Neptune is Voyager 2. Hopefully there'll be more, but we're already getting lots of de data back from Voyager 2. And again, check out the NASA website. You can see lots of photos and learn more about what we've learned about Neptune. And there's a nice close up of our beautiful Neptune. So thank you for joining me as we continue our investigation of our solar system. Next class, we're gonna take a closer look at the terrestrial planets, and I can't wait to see you again. Thank you, have a great day.